I'm Keener Fry, the Executive Director of the University of Wyoming Alumni Association. I am really pleased to be joined today by Chase McNamee. Chase is a Senior Project Manager at the Office of the Chancellor at the University of Denver. We are really pleased to be the first video to feature a program called Cowboy to Cowboy. Chase will be the first of many recorded videos that we will be providing to our alumni to share a variety of careers and a variety of industries and a variety of places that our students and alumni may want to work someday. Uh, Chase actually is the creator of this program. He worked for the University of Wyoming Alumni Association back uh, four or five years ago and actually came to me with this idea. Chase, we are really glad that you are here today to share your story. And I know our students and alumni would really be interested in learning a little of your background, how you got to the University of Wyoming, and what inspired your interest in pursuing a career in higher education. Chase? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all so much for having me. I am honored to be the first video interview uh, for Cowboy to Cowboy. Uh, it's such a phenomenal program. I'm so excited to see it growing and, and being able to connect more students and alumni. So um, as Keener said, my name is Chase McNamee and I'm originally from Shoshone, Wyoming. And um, I grew up there and uh, actually was a student athlete. I graduated with a small class of 24 students and I really, uh, I feel my roots are in Wyoming and I grew up on a farm and ranch and uh, really just feel like I wanted to explore a little bit of the world and I feel like higher education was kind of a place to do that. My mom had always stressed that and uh, my stepdad as well and so Coming from Shoshone, Wyoming, I was I was nervous to go out into the world and uh, go out into higher education, and so um, I actually ended up going to uh, two small schools in um, South Dakota, University of Sioux Falls and Black Hill State University, because I really wanted to get out of state and kind of explore what it was like um, outside of Wyoming, and uh, it was a phenomenal experience. I met some great guys with the football team and some amazing professors, but I really wanted to get back to Wyoming. I felt like I wanted to be closer to home and be closer to my parents and um, be able to help out on the farm and ranch as much as I could while going to school. And so I ended up back at the University of Wyoming and it honestly was the best decision of my life. Um, I loved playing football, but I feel like I was really craving something else besides just the day-to-day -day grind of college athletes, which I give them so much credit because it is a lot to do. And so I really wanted to do some different things. And when I came to the University of Wyoming, I was really blown away by honestly how many opportunities there were to get involved and just by how phenomenal the faculty and staff and the student body and everybody was and they really encouraged me to try to find some ways to get involved so i was able to get involved with um the admissions office as an admissions ambassador which was such a awesome job and i loved working for mary aguayo and pepper joe six and shelly dodd and the whole admissions team was just so great and they really helped me to understand the importance of higher education. And that's what kind of really got me started thinking about, wow, this is a powerful experience. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was really feeling lost. I, I switched my major actually five times throughout um, my career. And I, I really just was trying to think about what is it that I feel passionate about? And as I was going through my job at the admissions office and working with career services and the registrar's office and all these different places, I started to realize like I loved this institution of higher education and it was really a transformative experience for me between classes and these co-curricular activities and getting involved with United Multicultural Council and Associated Students at the University of Wyoming and student government. All of these opportunities really helped me solidify in my mind that although I had started out wanting to be in education in some form once I had switched education, I realized that I actually wanted to do something with post-secondary education. And so I talked to one of my mentors, um, Tanea, who worked in the admissions office at the time and who was such a phenomenal advocate in person. And she really encouraged me to think about doing degree in counseling um, to then focus on higher education and really be able to advocate for students and, and be an ally in that space. So I ended up, I was going to be a history teacher and I ended up actually graduating with my bachelor's degree from the University of Wyoming in history. And then I uh, pursued my master's and earned my master's in counseling from the University of Wyoming as well um, in 2015. And that's when I got connected to the uh, 
wonderful alumni association at the University of Wyoming, which I cannot say enough good things about. They do such amazing work and keep everybody so connected. And uh, I got connected through a graduate assistantship there and worked with the Wild Gold Student Alumni Association and really decided that that's where I wanted to be in higher ed. It kind of combined these different parts of perspective student work, on-campus work, working with alumni. So that kind of led me to my career path there and deciding I wanted to be in kind of a, a space around institutional advancement and strategic operations for the institution. And that's what kind of led me to the space that I'm in now. And uh, there's a lot more to that story that I could go into, but um, it was definitely such a transformative experience in higher education and what really made me want to uh, go into higher ed in the first place. What prompted you to go ahead and pursue your uh, PhD at the time you did, Chase? Yeah, so I was working at the University of Wyoming Alumni Association, um, and I really just started to have questions about um, alumni relations and philanthropy and whether people were studying this, because I was so interested in this work, and I was really interested in bringing different voices to the table and just seeing how we could grow our work and really think about it from different lenses. And it was actually an unreal story because I have a twin brother who also went to the University of Wyoming um, and graduated with his bachelor's there. And he went to the University of Connecticut. And I uh, went to visit him for his master's graduation and actually met his advisor. And lo and behold, his advisor, Professor Noah Dresner, who um, is now my advisor at Teachers College at Columbia University, he was the one who had been writing all of this research that I was reading on alumni relations and philanthropy, and particularly identity-based philanthropy. And so I just fell in love with the work and stayed connected with Noah and decided that I would like to be a scholar practitioner who both uh, works in the field and practices institutional advancement and strategic operations in higher ed, but also who um, studies and actually pushes the field and, and gets us thinking through different theoretical lenses and understanding. So that's what led me to, to pursue it. And it was a great, great decision. And I've been able to research institutional advancement and learn so much about higher education. And it's truly been a transformative experience for me learning more about my own identities and backgrounds and culture and biases and values and all of these pieces that I started exploring at the University of Wyoming and then was able to keep exploring at Teachers College at Columbia. Can you give us just a quick overview of the time frame of, of, of a student or alum that's looking at pursuing a PhD after they've completed their master's program, what that time frame looks like? Yeah, yep. I, I always am really honest with uh, people who want to go into um, a higher ed degree, if they're doing a master's, if they want to do a doctorate, is that, you know, it will take between five years to seven years or more sometimes, depending on the kind of program and, and what you want to do with it. And so by the time it's all said and done, um, I will be between six and seven years in my doctorate. And so there's uh, three to four years of coursework typically, and then there is uh, two to three years while you're working on your dissertation because they really focus on um, ensuring that you're using rigorous methods, that you understand the field and the literature, and that you feel prepared to be an advocate in the field of higher education and really be a, a um, change maker in higher education. And so I will say though, I was a young freshman who had no idea what I wanted to do, and I was able to then go through this path where I changed my major and I was undeclared and I um, actually went to a local community college for a semester and um, I, I switched schools and all of these things and your pathway is this transformative experience. And so I would say, don't be afraid of that pathway. Um, this year, this last year I turned 30 years old and I never thought I would have lived in New York City um, coming from Shoshone, Wyoming and earning my master's and now working on my doctorate at Columbia. These things all just seemed like out of reach and something I wasn't thinking about. But leaning on your connections and your mentors and your faculty and the staff and using the alumni association and, and these ways of networking was honestly the only way that I got to where I am. Because had I stayed in a silo and kind of just kept my head down and not connected with people, I wouldn't have gotten any of these opportunities um, and I'm so thankful to have them. And so I really would stress that was a big part of my journey was just the people that I met along the way who were willing to invest time in me and take time for me. And I'm just so thankful for that. What would be the one or two pieces of advice for a student uh, at UW right now, or maybe even an alum that has been a practicing educator or been in this field? What do they really need to know? What are the one or two things that need to help them get on the right trajectory to pursue their PhD and then land a, 
a uh, really prestigious position at a prestigious university at the University of Denver. Yeah, um, you know, I would say just be a sponge as much as possible. Um, when I first went into higher education as a as an undergraduate student, I, I kind of knew, you know, five or six career options. And then I started to realize there is a lot of degree programs and a lot of things to do. And I would say the same is true for higher education, where I went in with a very specific idea based on my experiences that I wanted to work at admissions and then I wanted to work in Dean of Students Office. But as I talked to people, I realized there were specific parts that I liked about certain jobs. So for me, I like strategic thinking combined with kind of the nuts and bolts and behind the scenes work. And I like bringing them together. And so I always tell people, if you're going to do something, connect with people first to ask them about their experiences, do informational interviews through Cowboy to Cowboy, um, do informational interviews and have a cup of coffee and just ask, what's a day to day look like for you? Because my career path went from admissions to career services to Dean of Students work and um, crisis counseling to alumni relations now to the chancellor's office. And had I not connected with people and just chatted with them about what they like, um, I would have never been able to do that. And I will say that it's crucial to include both practice and kind of research behind what you're doing. So don't lean on just kind of your gut instinct all the time, which is so important, but really hone your craft. And that's something that I've learned from a lot of people is um, be willing to ask questions and, and talk to people and um, learn about your field and read articles and, and touch base with those people who are huge thought partners and, and thinkers in your area. And I would say the University of Wyoming Alumni Association is actually a great place to start with that because they have all that built in for you and they can help you as a student or an alum. And um, had I not connected with them for my graduate assistantship and even before that, I, I wouldn't have had near the opportunities that I uh, have been lucky to have. What else would be of interest for our students and alumni to know other than you did teach band at an elementary school in Shoshone for one semester and it was one of our best alumni engagement uh, visits we've ever had, Chase, with you. So That's what I would say, that path that you think like, uh, I always laugh, like laughs what happens when you're busy making plans. Uh, so my wife, Megan, and I, who's also a fellow UW alum, uh, we moved out to New York City and I was ready to start my doctorate and we were two months in and uh, my mom, who is now doing better, but she got breast cancer and uh, we had to then pack everything up and move back to Wyoming because that's the life of a rural student. Like you can't just buzz home and see your mom. You have to be able to get on a plane and then get on another plane. And so we ended up making the decision and working with Noah and other faculty members at Teachers College were so amazing. And we just, they worked with me and I actually zoomed in for classes every week, just like this and was able to join in. And uh, I spent that year back in Wyoming taking care of my parents, actually both ended up in the ICU and it was just an unreal time. But actually Keener called me and checked in on me numerous times and just said, we're here for you if you need anything. And uh, I became the band teacher at Shoshone uh, um, schools, which I was back at my alma mater. And they were so phenomenal. And it really helped me to connect the work of what I was doing with um, Anna Newman and teaching and learning at Teachers College in this space in Wyoming. And then I was able to connect back to my University of Wyoming roots and go to some Cowboys games. I actually watched the Heartbreaker when we lost uh, the Mountain West football championship. It was just, it was good to be back in my roots, but also be learning at the same time. So I would say just embrace those changes because you never know what will happen. And we ended up moving back to Denver from New York within a matter of three weeks. And so um, you just never know. So take the opportunities and be willing to just talk with people. Well, I want one thing, Chase, for sure. My dad always used to say, whatever you find yourself doing, make sure you do it excellently. And then the opportunities will continue to unfold and be available for you. And I can't think of anything uh, that more epitomizes that philosophy than you in the middle of being, doing your doctorate work and then putting family first and then having great resources, I guess, at, at Columbia that were able to work with you and then to go back there and you gave your all. I know you were the best band teacher they probably ever had, <laughs> but that's just great advice. So Chase, thank you very much for taking this time today and to our students and alumni who may be watching. You know, as the Alumni Association, we are trying to be uh, as responsive as possible to the interests and needs to benefit our alumni. 
and uh, students. And so these webinars will be a standard part of what we do. You will be able to find more information on our website. You can call our office, uh, multiple ways to get a hold of the Alumni Association. We are here for you. And uh, there will be some additional information on the final screen of this video today. So uh, thank you, Chase. Again, uh, we will catch up soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Go Cowboys. Absolutely.